I thought this was a really interesting statistic. All, despite what the drug companies would um, suggest to you, all commonly used non-steroidals that are used in veterinary medicine, whether they're COX-2 specific or not, cause gastric lesions. And that's actually from studies where they've gone and, and looked um, after a certain period of time of, of dogs being on the non-steroidal. And they looked uh, with endoscopes and said, yep, yeah, there's gastric lesions there. Whether those are clinically significant um, remains to be seen, but certainly it has been demonstrated with all non-steroidals. Um, interestingly, also, again, uh, kind of goes against popular belief, but corticosteroids just simply by themselves are hardly ulcerogenic. And that um, even at really high immunosuppressive doses, um, they don't in and of themselves cause ulcers. Um, the, ster the steroids, though, do enhance the damaging effects of non-steroidals, so we know that. Um, however, I, it's not that uncommon for me to still see dogs getting steroids and non-steroidals concomitantly, and that is a big time no-no because um, you're giving them the, the one-two punch there don't want to do that. Also, dogs that um, are on corticosteroids and, and develop hypotension for whatever reason, um, and you know other factors that might be associated. Um, I have found that dogs that develop ulceration while they're on steroids, it's so incredibly hard to get those those ulcers to heal. So. Um, we, you know, we always talk about using GI protectants when we have them on steroids. If you don't have other factors um, going along, then I would say you probably don't necessarily need to do that. But it's not wrong um, just simply because it's so hard to get an ulcer to heal. Um, even anti-inflammatory effects of corticosteroids when they're used in combination with other factors can cause severe ulceration. And that's especially true for dexamethasone. 